Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 66 of the Parenting Autism Podcast, where we find the joy in our journey. I like that new tagline. Right on. It's good. You can find us on the web, www.parentingautismshow.com, or reach out to us by email for things like our contest, or if you just want to say hi, <laughs> it's parentingautism at att.net. And we're back. People are probably like, wow, you only took a week to do another (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Well, I said last time we were going to intentionally try to make more time to do this. Here we are. And here we are. So I'm Sandy. This is Chris. Chris, And our little guy is Bryce. This is your first time. We're glad you found us. Welcome. And if you've been along for the journey, thank you. And as always, I do have stuff, notes things we can talk about hey i think there's one person out there that's been thinking about giving us a review and i think they're going to do it this week (laughs) (laughs) think so i think so (laughs) yay that would be awesome we haven't had one in a while yeah reviews are great i mean i don't like getting on here and, and begging for them every time but it really does help us go up in the search engines because right now if i search on my phone in the apple itunes and mm-hmm. i just put in autism we don't come up oh hmm. so there are many other podcasts that do come up and i want it to be if somebody types in the word autism and it's another parent like us yeah. who is looking for that help and that hope um i want us to come up so, so right right now we're the best kept secret <laughs> <laughs> we might be the best kept okay. secret all right but people are finding us and that's awesome because <laughs> i know that because people reach out to us and we have been doing contests this year and we did a giveaway in january february and march and yes we slacked in april yes. there's a lot going on but we're back to do a giveaway for the month of may yeah here we are and so the- what we decided this time I know I was keeping it a secret there for a while, but we're going to announce what it is this time. We have mentioned in past podcasts about a magnetic calendar that we have kept on our refrigerator for quite some time. It's a really cool calendar that helped Bryce when he was first learning about seasons, learning the months of the year. Days of the week. Days of the week. It's also got like the temperature on there. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of things that has been. And how he's feeling. Is that on? Oh, it is. Yeah. That's right. And the emotions are on yeah. there. And that was a big draw to us. But we have other tools now that we're using. Yeah. And so we thought it would be nice if we could pass this along and pay it forward to another family. Yeah. So we've had this big discussion and debate, like, how do people participate in this contest? But I think the best way to do it is what we did before, which is just reach out to us through messages yeah and i'm gonna say email would be best because i found a message through social media today that was buried for the past month and i didn't even know it was there Mm -hmm. and it must have come in through a back channel of instagram i didn't even know it was there and i feel terrible and i'm going to respond to this person (laughs) tomorrow when i get to sit down but i don't want someone to enter and then i miss it where if it's actually the email i know i won't miss it Parenting autism at att.net. Yeah. If you think you're in the market for this magnetic calendar thing, it sticks to your refrigerator and it's it's, it's really cool. Yeah, and it's not super big. I mean, it does no. not take up all our space, and right. it's it's a really great tool. It's and very colorful. We'll be happy to ship it to your home yep. as a, a gift from us. Yep. It's from the Coulter HQ. Send us a note and we'll put you in the drawing. Yep. So we're going to take the entries through the end of May and then we'll do the drawing and announce it in the month of June. First podcast in June. Yep. Awesome. Great. Do you want to take something on your notes or do you want me to roll? Um, I'll share a quick tip. Okay. Quick tip. <laughs> Did that music. Quick tip. Okay. So here's okay. my joke that somebody told me this oh, week. Yeah, I'm going to share yeah, yeah. my sheep joke. <laughs> what, do you, what do you call sheep rolling down a hill? What do you call it? A lamb slide. Oh. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. That's good. Okay, that's okay so anyway, what I was going to say was um, this week I came across a word search generator. So basically, if you Google word search generator, there's just a couple of them out there and they're free. And so you, let's say Bryce is interested in planes or 
or a space. You, you know, you you type in all the words that you want to be in the word search. And like, when you say word search, you're talking about the puzzles where you're trying to identify the words and circle the letters in sequence to spell out a word? Um, yes. So, like, you have all these letters... And you're trying to find the words amongst the letters. Mm -hmm. Word search. I know, right? but not everybody might not know what you're talking about okay, yeah. when you just say it that way. So yeah. it's so, like the books, like the puzzles that we see in books. Yeah. Yeah. So you plug in, you know, 10 or 20 words that you want them to find, and it will automatically put in the extra letters. And you can choose whether you want the words to go forwards and backwards and diagonally. Or just forwards and diagonally. Up and, and down. Yeah. So, really cool tool. I tried it with Bryce this week, and he really didn't seem interested. <laughs> <laughs> but we were excited. <laughs> I was very excited. Hey, listen, I think that is a great tool. It, it is for the right person. And that, it is. That is there right now. And Bryce will get there. Yeah. I think he will. It might just be a little too much for him right now, but when I was probably 10 11 years old so see that's a little bit older mm -hmm. than what bryce is now we used to i had to go to i didn't shouldn't say it this way i had to go to church i went to church three times a week it's on yeah. church day but you know sunday mornings was all for kids but sunday evening and wednesday night not as much so i would sit with my friends and we would make word search puzzles oh for each goodness. other we did and so we would spell out those words and i try to make them bible related but we would spell them out and then we create the puzzles and then halfway through we hand them off to each other and then we would solve each other's puzzles so it was really cool that you found this for the computer and i liked what you tried with it because mm -hmm. you guys are working on geography geography and so you were putting the these continents. new words to him mm -hmm. in the puzzle and the oceans did you try it with something that's more of an no. Topic of interest, like what you mentioned. No, being, but I could. So maybe try that and just for kicks, see if maybe that interests him I'll try, more. I'll try it one more time with something else. But, you know, he he has a hard time looking for things and looking around for things. And I find that so often with him. And I thought a word search would help him look at the whole page and try to find something, you know, because a lot of times I've noticed even in school where I'll say, okay, find this. And he'll just be looking at one part and he can be like, I can't find it, but it's kind of there plain as day. It's and true. I'll say, okay, we'll look all around, you know, maybe look up here and, you know, all of a sudden, okay, the, I see it. So it's kind of interesting the way he sees things or looks at things so he he doesn't always take in the whole picture that is a really good point so maybe that will help help him expand mm -hmm. his vision i see what yeah. you're saying there very very interesting so how was school this week oh, i was great great he is he's comprehending things we've been getting two books from the library every week and he's loving these books that we've got the last one was called dandy and there was another <clears throat> excuse me another one called if your grandma gives you a lemon tree it's a really cute book yeah so he he's finding the humor yeah. in the books mm -hmm. and he's using inflection when he reads the stories and he is really liking that it's like you said so we'll get the books and we will read the story to him but he, we model it for him, really. Mm -hmm. He hears our inflection. He knows, you know, what's funny or not funny um, when it's emphatic, you know, and you do a great job too, which I've heard you like point out, like, okay, so these are big letters mm -hmm. and an exclamation point. So that means it's like a lot exciting. more exciting, yeah. you know. But he's heard us read it and then he's recognizing how reading that text and hearing the way that we say it, how that goes together. And then he's able to model, you know, we model it and then he's able to imitate that and put his own thing. Like he's even trying to create his little voice, his little girl yeah, when he talks, yeah, you know, yeah. and it's so, so yeah. cute. So this week I actually got to be home for a little bit mm -hmm. of the week because the bad news was that at my office, the internet and the phones were out when I arrived on Monday. But the good news was I'm like, hey, I'm going home to work because we all learned how to work remotely. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was home most of Monday and then all of Tuesday 
and most of Wednesday, which was nice because I did get to come out during my little lunch break and observe and hear and see what you guys are doing with the curriculum. And then when I came home, I think it was um, Wednesday when I came home, you were still working on typing. Mm -hmm. And that was so cool. And I actually took a video of that, which I haven't posted yet. But yeah, that's another thing on my list that I wanted to mention. Yeah, today. go ahead. So, I, I think it was excellent. Yeah. So Bryce is seven and it was first brought up by his OT. Um, she's like, you know, has he tried typing yet? And I said, no. And she says, well, I'm working on a, a typing program. I want to say it was something like rat a tat tat or something. I, I don't know what it, exactly what it was, but we tried it at home. He didn't really seem interested in it. So we kind of paused that and I figured, well, it's second grade now. Let me pick it back up. Let me go to some of my forums and find out what people are using. And one of the programs that people mentioned a lot was typing.com. So I went on there and I signed up for the year. I don't even know how much it was. It was like 10 bucks for a year, something cheap like yeah. that. And it would remove all the ads. And you know, when you're when oh, you yeah. have autism, you don't want ads because that's just further Who distraction. Needs another distraction. Yeah. Exactly. So he started this, and it tells him how many words per minute he's typing and how accurate. So it gives him a percentage for how accurate he is. And it's not uh, all that cartoony, I would say. It's it's pretty straightforward. It it gives you the letters across the screen. It probably has three different formats. Like you try typing for what's written on the screen and then maybe you'll climb a ladder by typing the words and maybe there's one other type of thing. So it's it's not I wouldn't say it's made for kids, but it, he seems to like it, right? So Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's, he's very serious when he's doing it. And from what I observed, which I didn't see the whole thing, but I noticed that they're taking let's three to five letters, I would say, and mm -hmm. they're using different words with those same letters so that he's really getting familiar where those letters are on the keyboard. Mm -hmm. So his fingers can pretty much stay in the same place. Right. But you know it's gonna lay like T R E E and then maybe they'll throw another letter in there, T H E R E. You know, so you're spelling yeah. tree and then there and then you know they I can just tell that they're using those same letters so he's got some repetition going on mm -hmm. but mixing it up enough that his brain has to shift yeah. and he has to you know figure out but yet his brain's going to memorize where those keys are mm -hmm. as he's doing that and it'll get easier and easier for I, him i think he really likes the challenge of completing with 100 percent accuracy because i told him at first he was focusing on words per minute and so I'm like, no, they want you to focus on the accuracy more than how fast you are. And so he he got that and he started doing it. And, you know, you get these little badges and the bottom half of the screen actually shows the keyboard and your fingers on the keyboard and which fingers you're supposed to be using where. So the bottom half of the screen is like that. So if you forget which finger you're supposed to be using for which letter, yeah. it shows you. And then the top part of the screen is the activity that you're doing. Gotcha. So nice. it's really cool. He, it is. He's enjoying it. And um, so it's 15 minutes a day is what they want you to spend on it. And that's about perfect for him. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think it's great. I, I love the mix that you got going on. And I love that you're doing your yoga again in the morning. Mm -hmm. And... What's the other thing that you're working on with him that you were showing him, showing me, um, using both sides of his brain? Yeah, so there's an exercise called crossovers, and basically, you're to describe it without a visual is picture yourself marching in place, and you take your right hand, and when your left knee comes up, you reach across and you touch your left knee. And then when your right knee comes up, when you're marching, you reach across with your left hand and touch your knee. And it was very interesting to watch because this activity is supposed to help connect the sides of the brain together, mm -hmm. you know, and it's supposed to help, you know, kids with autism. So 
when we first started, it was like a runaway train. I mean, it was just <laughs> hands and knees were everywhere. Or a hot mess. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow. Um, so we slowed down. I kind of modeled it for him. I did hand over hand. And so I got him to do it. Then I'm like, Sandy, you got to come and check this out because it was so obvious that he was having trouble mm -hmm. connecting, you know, with his brain trying to do that. I wanted you to see the before and after, you know, but by the time I got you out there, there was no more before. He was really he getting had, it. Yeah, he was doing well with it. So that was encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. That's exciting stuff we got going on. Mm -hmm. uh, there was something else new that we introduced to him this week. So we have Bryce's BCBA, who is works helps us with his behaviors, basically. She writes the plan. We carry it out. And I thought while she was here this week, we would bring out one of the newer games that we got when we went to Lake Shore last month. And so this one is called... Hold on, drum roll, please. Oh, no, hold you on. You do the top of the box. Oh, I put it down here. I tried to be all prepared, you know. I tried to make Chris proud of me. Um, social emotional quickies is what it's called. Uh -huh. And it's reading, sorting, and matching. But what I like about it is it's got different topics that I know we'll be working on with him. And so one of them had to do with self-control. And so that's something we've really been working on with Bryce is learning to control his emotions a bit more and channel them. Um, in fact, I do want to comment that we're happy to report that this past week, I, I don't know, did you see any drops? I don't remember seeing him drop to the floor. Mm. Actually, I think he might have once, but they're diminishing. And the reason why is because he is now verbalizing, I will drop, yeah. which yeah. I'd rather him say it than actually do it and that mm -hmm. just means that he's frustrated but one day when he got upset this week about something and actually we were at dinner and you took the ipad you probably warned him but you took the ipad without really asking i know it just kind of happened telling. or telling him and he was upset and but instead of saying i'm gonna drop instead of dropping he actually hit his leg like out of frustration mm -hmm. and i thought well that is progress mm -hmm. i mean and then i said well okay why are you frustrated and he said took my ipad without telling me or something i mean he was able to say enough what it was and then i'm like well you're right that wasn't very nice so you apologize to him and should have because mm -hmm. we're trying to teach him to do things too and i get it and we all do things in the moment but the great thing is how he handled that that mm -hmm. is so much better and that's what we're working toward so anyway so the self-control is a big thing and i like this one it has a several different questions that come with it so it's the same question but with two different endings so the one that i pulled out basically was saying if you're riding your bike and it's wobbly and you keep falling there were two ways you could end that you could either say i'm so bad at this i'm just not going to try anymore or you could say well i know this is hard but i'm going to keep trying and i'm going to learn how to do it mm -hmm. right Positive talk, negative talk. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it's got here is like an emoji smiley face that says positive self-talk. And then it's got a not so happy emoji face that says negative self-talk. So anyway, so we put those out. And I'm not sure that he really understood what positive and negative was. And so I wanted to see it if he knew what that was before we explained it. And he really didn't. So you did a good job coming behind saying, well, do you think that was a happy choice there or a sad choice and he could correlate that positive is happy and that negative is sad, sad. Mm -hmm. and then he was kind of getting that together and that was a good one and then the other one was things that you could say or think so for example you go to somebody's house and they don't take their shoes off when they go in the house and that's weird so is that something you should say or is that something you should think? Or somebody gives you a present, but it's not the present that you really wanted. Is that something you should say or something you should think? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something as he's becoming more verbal, you know, 
again, I don't want to use the word that's not appropriate all the time with him. So I kind of like this approach of saying, hmm, should you think that or should you say that? Mm -hmm. Should that be out loud or do you keep that inside? And I love having these cards that kind of make it into a game format, but are going to help us work with him. And there's all different kinds of categories. Those are just the two that I pulled out just to get us started. But it's something that we're going to start working with. And Miss Amanda, when she saw it, she's like, oh, I got to get this game too for my kids because we're finding things and introducing them to her that she can share with her other clients. And it's good stuff, especially as the kids are getting older or a lot of them are even diagnosed Asperger's, you know, and so they've got all their language but maybe they still need to learn on the positive and the negative self-talk and i think another uh thing that you can uh kind of segue that with is to make up your own cards like these games they give us ideas on how to do things so like we could make up our own questions to add to this game you know that are might be more appropriate for his situation because some of the cards talk about school well he doesn't know anything about public school probably at least half of them have to do with school so there you go so so you just make up your own about your friends and your situation Mm -hmm. but at least it gives us something to bounce off of right i think these these are great ideas i don't like to come up with everything from scratch (laughs) right we don't want to reinvent the wheel no no so we just want to take the wheel and modify it for Mm, bryce so that was really good and i'm i'm really excited to keep working with that um i did write down a couple things this week you know how bryce says things and i like to share what he Mm -hmm. says if it kind of touches me so earlier this week i don't know he was talking about some robo dog and I didn't even know what he's talking about, which that happens. And then he went a little bit further to let me know that that was coming from this super book Mm -hmm. and super book is a cartoon. Is that correct? It's a Christian cartoon series, right? That kind of tells you more about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I've only watched it briefly with him. Um, So anyway, so I said to him, do you like super book? And he says, yeah, a lot. I want to learn more about the Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. It doesn't get better than that. That's huge. Yeah. That's really huge. Yeah. And so, you know, I have been talking a lot lately about how am I going to teach him more about the Bible, but he's figuring out, you know, from that. I know somebody wrote me and asked me if I knew about Veggie Tales, which I do, and I appreciated that. Um, Bryce hasn't. I don't know why he doesn't like Larry and Bob. We, we tried. <laughs> it's not taken tales. to it much. It's it's. But we, we could always try again. Yeah. But sometimes we, when find, we tried. It wasn't yeah, clicking. when we did. But I hadn't in a while, so I might try that again. But I, I'm happy that he likes the super book, and that was good. And then I told him that tomorrow, because tomorrow will be Sunday, um, that we're going to have a new fruit of the spirit. And mm-hmm. he, he says, "I said, do you want to know what it is today, or do you want me to tell you tomorrow?" And he goes. Oh, what is it? Tell me today. <laughs> and I said, okay, it's going to be peace. And he goes, peace. We already learned about joy. I said, we oh, did. Good. And I said, and we learned about love. And now we're going to learn about peace. And it's on the fruit, the banana. <laughs> and he goes, oh, I want the puppets today. Aww. And I said, nope, they're coming tomorrow. That's awesome. And we're going to learn about peace tomorrow. So that'll be fun. He's excited about it. It's good. And there's a. Um, a little game that we're going to do with it, which I hadn't told you about yet. (laughs) But it's different. Like, we're going to actually work with a banana and different ways to peel a banana. And you can use, like, a wrench and a screwdriver and all these different tools. Okay. So I think that'll be fun, too, right? And then we can kind of explain to him, you know, the different fruits of the spirit and stuff. So it's going to be a fun project tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll do that tomorrow afternoon after church. Good. Yeah. So that was cool. Yeah, so um, what do you have anything else? Sarah? I always got stuff. But oh, do you have anything right. else? I, I think I just had one more. Go. Um, we're putting up a new shed in our backyard, and I had about, it's got to be three to 4,000 pounds of gravel delivered <laughs> to our driveway. That's a lot. And so I guess it was a little bigger job than I thought it was going to be getting 
all of that rock to the backyard where the shed is. And I was completely wore out. I was probably three quarters of the way through the pile. And I was like having trouble keeping going. And I just wanted to finish it. And you're like, hey, I'll, I'll come out and help you, you know, finish up or whatever. And I'm like, okay, I won't say no. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so, um, and then it dawned on me. I'm like, well, let's let's do this as a family thing. And I'm going to offer Bryce some money to come out and shovel. And, boy, he was sitting there playing his iPad. And I'm like, Bryce you come out and and help us shovel i'll pay you some money and he, oh no you didn't you said i will pay you five dollars <laughs> you told him how much i did i did i and said that's like a hundred dollars to him for us so that and, was good but i really wanted him to do it because it'll help him a learn how to use a shovel b work the muscles you know oh, yeah. and c it's it's a motion across the body so that they're always talking in ot how you want the hands to come across the body because oh, that, i did not know that that helps the, the brain you know you always kind of want to you know it's important to be able to oh i did uh, know that to cross yes the midline the midline they call it, thank right? you thank yeah. you the midline so he immediately turned his iPad off. He says, oh, yeah. okay, I'm going to shovel right now. Where do I need to go? <laughs> How do I need to do it? Where's my shovel? He did. He was so in. I was like, wow, that had an even bigger impact than I thought it would. It did. And we got a little bit into the project. And we probably did seven or eight loads together, I would yeah. say. So um, it was, we were probably three loads in. And he's like, Okay, I think I have to go now. I'm, I'm hot, getting and hot and sweaty. And yeah. I said, well, then that would only be $2, but thank you for your service. <laughs> and he's like, well, I'll get some water, Mommy. I'll be right back. And then he came back. Yeah. He wanted the full fight, but I was going to let him go, but yeah, he was only going to yeah. get $2, yeah. and I would thank him for all that he did. Yep. But nope, he finished it out. He's so awesome. He, he came out awesome. there, and he was shoveling in his own way, you know, and most of the rocks made it into the well, wheelbarrow. Well, in the beginning, he wasn't because he was flipping them back, or he'd overshoot. Oh the barrel but then <laughs> i'm like we're gonna be cleaning up more so yeah. it was okay and once he i knew he had the digging part it was mm-hmm. the coming up and so then when i said well here let me show you and i did hand over hand with him and i said don't bring it back bring it over right over the wheelbarrow and once he saw he goes okay mommy i got it and yep. then he did it and then he really did have it and then he yeah. then he was hitting it oh, so, so again awesome. it's just showing him having that patience to yeah show him and teach him and, and it was great family time you know we yeah, all worked was. together to accomplish a project we did it, it was, was cool great. and it then was there great. was the big broom and you're like here bryce i want you to take the big broom and sweep the rocks toward the pile yeah. and because uh, you were taking another load to the backyard mm-hmm. so he tried it the one time he was not digging that no, at all he didn't like oh it. no so then the next time he's like mommy you will do the broom and i will help daddy mm-hmm. take the rocks to the back <laughs> <laughs> i'm still helping i'm just uh, helping daddy go back there I'm like, good so for him funny. he's figuring it out he is smart yeah so that was a fun morning yeah. yes and we were all hot and sweaty but we did it yeah it was good Uh, You told me to write this down because it really was cute. It's another cute thing Bryce said. So you ask him, Bryce, we have an aquarium with fish. And you said, which is louder, me talking or the fish tank? And what was his answer? Do you remember? No, I don't remember that. (laughs) You're so funny. (laughs) And you told me, it's a good thing you tell me the answers. You said that he said, well, you're oh, louder, right. Daddy, because the fish don't talk. That's right. That's right. I remember now. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> the fish don't talk, Daddy. You're louder. So anyway, that yeah, was funny. Yeah. So that, it's that funnier funny. that you can't remember it, but that was funny. Yeah. I was trying to, I don't know, I was trying to gauge on how loud things were in the room. So I was asking them those types of things. Yeah, because we've, we've seen the videos where it's, for some people they've expressed for some people on the spectrum, I should say, they've expressed that all noises are the same, level. whether yeah, the yeah. same level. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why they, sometimes they have to really focus on one sound because it's just too much. Yeah. And he doesn't seem uh, to have too much of that issue. Another thing came up like it was a year or two ago 
when he told me that the kitchen light was flashing. And it's a fluorescent light, and I know some kids are adverse, you know, to fluorescent lights because they can actually see them flicker. It's like seeing the... If you do fluorescent lights on slow motion, I think you can see them flicker. So it's like these kids can sometimes see that flicker, and I have that on all the time when I'm doing homeschool because we're in that room, like, next to it. And so now that he's talking and understanding more, I I asked him again. I turned on the dining room or family room light, and I said what's different about the family room light and the kitchen light? And he's he thought for a minute, he's like, well, this one's more yellow than that one. I'm like, okay. And I said, what else is different? He says, well, this one's smaller than that one. Mm-hmm. I said, okay. I said, is, and I pointed to the kitchen light. I said, is this one flashing? I was kind of leading him to it because, I was at that point where he wasn't pointing it out. So yeah. I thought, well, let me lead the horse to water and see what he says. And he said, nope, it's not flashing. I was like, okay, thanks. So either he's overcome that or he doesn't see it the same way or it just came out of the blue and it wasn't even flashing before. I don't know. But I thought that was interesting. I think it's interesting, too. We're learning new things every day. Mm-hmm. How are we doing on time? Uh, I don't know. Okay. But, uh... I wanted yeah. to just... If you're done, I, I wanted to just wrap up a couple of things. Well, I but, just had one more. Oh. Well, okay, well, let me do this, and then yeah. we'll let you wrap up. Okay. And then we'll go. All right, so I came across his ABA targets today while I was going through notes. And we really haven't... I don't have these posted out in front of me to see every day, but these are the things we're supposed to be working on with okay. him. <laughs> so... Hey, listen, the behaviors are down, so I'm, like, really happy, and I'm not even really focusing on whatever else we were supposed to help him with. I mean, oh, I know. I think the the behaviors are the victory. Overall, it's been really, really good. Yeah. And the only two times that he has said that he wanted to drop to the floor this week was when he f- felt like he was being reprimanded for something Mm -hmm. and um like last night we went to dinner Mm -hmm. and he and it's on this target ab target list but he walked right out into the middle of the road and i know he did not look both ways Mm -hmm. and you and i were both helping grandma robo get out of the car Mm -hmm. and there went bryce and i was Mm -hmm. like whoa bryce you know by this point bryce is in the middle middle. of the road again this is not a highway people this is in a parking lot but still he was in the middle so then he puts on his brakes and he's standing there and i'm like well don't stand in the middle keep going now but i had stopped him and he didn't and then when i got up to him i said buddy you, you know you have to wait for us or you have to look both ways and make sure and then he's like i'm gonna fall to the ground and i said you don't have to fall to the ground <laughs> oh, you're man. not in trouble but you know but that's yeah. kind of when that will the come default, out yeah. if he feels like he's getting he in trouble wrong. for something yeah. which i don't even know what the other thing was but it was the same thing mm-hmm. you know it was because something was getting corrected but anyway so i just want to get your take on this mm-hmm. how we're doing yeah <laughs> Which sometimes we seem to nail it without seeing the notes, which mm-hmm. that's just God's direction, which we appreciate. Hit me. Um, communication. Accepting no. Accepting the word no or when he's, he's doing be- so much better Don't you think he's doing that. so much better with that? Yes. There's yeah. no, there's no um, attitudes, I guess you could say, about you know when we tell him no. Or we're very good at compromising if it's mm-hmm. not a no, we can compromise, you know. But sometimes it is a no, and he's doing very well. He is. And actually, so – and I know with us, it's it's different than when he's with somebody else. And you and I were talking after his music therapy this morning because Mr. Tom was here. And so Bryce was really excited, and he wanted to play the marble run that you set up for him yesterday and show that to Mr. Tom. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't that he didn't want to do music. He just wanted to show him that first. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Tom is here for an hour, and he's like, um, how about we don't do that right now? Let's go ahead and do our music, and then maybe we can at look at that at the end. Mm-hmm. And Bryce went with that. Yeah. And that's accepting a no, because mm-hmm. he didn't get to do what he wanted to do in the order that he wanted to do yeah. it. 
but he handled it really well. He did. And so I'm going to say to the listeners what I told you. So bear with me because I sure, know it's sure. not fresh. Yeah. But I pointed out that, see, this is one of the values of having therapy for Bryce that really doesn't get recognized. Having him with an, another adult, another person of authority, of him learning how to interact with them and to accept no or to follow their directions. It's one thing with when it's with us. It's total, or even with Mama, you know, or Papa. But when he's with somebody else, um, I thought it was great to be able to listen and to observe how he interacts and how he takes it when he doesn't get to rule the roost, you know, or how they can redirect him. And a couple of times we'll have to go in, you know, if it's if it's not changing and, and get him back on the right track. But for the most part, it goes really well. But he has to have these opportunities because we don't send him to school every day. Right. So it's those not are just his the opportunities. therapy that he's receiving. It's the interaction with the adult that's yeah. also helping him. And that, you know, we sometimes wonder what's what all is he getting out of these therapies and all this time and money that's being invested for him. But I think there's so much more to it mm-hmm. than just what the title of the therapy is. Right. And that was my Good point. point. But um, asks permission. So I, I think we're working on that still, like for him to ask permission to do something or um, to take something from somebody. He's got to still learn. May I take that or may I have that? Or if he can do something to ask permission. And I noticed that when Miss Amanda is here. She points that out to him often because Mm. he wants to start her Jeep. Bryce is all about engines Mm. and cars. And so he'll say, can I start your Jeep? And then she'll say, did mom say it's okay? Mm -hmm. So there it is, seeking my permission. Mm -hmm. You know, where if he's wanting to do something and he needs to ask somebody else permission, I will say, well, did you ask them if it's okay? Did you ask for permission? That one didn't stick out to me as being a... I don't a think large it's a problem. But. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things that we just want to teach him polite behaviors yes. as well. Um, but where I have seen it be a problem is specifically when we were at the condo when your brothers and Auntie Sue were here, he just went over and snatched her <laughs> Nintendo Switch yes, game right out of did, her yeah. hand without asking permission. Mm-hmm. Again, he's probably not in very many situations where yeah. it could be an issue and we nipped that in the butt we did and so that's the kind of stuff we got to just you know work on as we have opportunities Mm -hmm. um responding to a greeting with conversation again how many opportunities does he have to respond to somebody because he's with us most of the time Mm -hmm. but when somebody does come to the house i have said to him because he likes to get the door but instead of just standing there i've said you know why don't you invite them in Mm -hmm. whoever's coming we try to say if you can engage in a conversation. But I think it's something we still got a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, again, these aren't bad behaviors. Right. These are just social. Way, he needs these social well, lessons. And, and, and the point is, these things don't come natural to Bryce. Right. So, again, right. where other children, it comes natural. And I don't think my mom ever had to specifically teach me mm-hmm. all of the things we have to specifically teach Bryce. But, you know, these are the kind of things that will help yeah. shape him into becoming the great kid he already is and will continue to be. Um, restating questions. That's one of the goals or targets. Waiting for like, attention. Wait, like not restating it? So restating the question, it's one that where if he asks you the same thing over and over again and you're not answering it the way he wants, so he'll say... That's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. No. And so what we're trying to do is get help him understand that if you maybe ask it a different way, you might mm-hmm. hear the answer you want. Mm-hmm. But it's not something that – these are not problems we've had to been dealing with, mm-hmm. which is great. Um, but also I think that we have limited situations that he's in to deal with these problems because he's not out in a public social environment very often. How many you got over there? Why are you getting bored? No, but it looks like a long list. We could do another podcast. (laughs) Don't be scared. I only got a couple more. All right. All right. I'll go faster. Waiting for attention, which we do need to work better, but he does need to wait when we're talking. He has gotten better. Um, and then waits before speaking. So I, you know, the interrupting thing and learning to wait. So we'll work on that. Community Mm -hmm. safety only has three things. 
crossing the street safely, which I mentioned. Walk on the sidewalk beside your caregiver. I think he's really good at that, actually. We don't have sidewalks. Yeah, but he doesn't like try to roam roam in the road. He's pretty good with that. And then watch where he's walking. And that's one that I really want to just bring up while we're sitting here eye to eye. Well, every time he trips over something, I reiterate that he has to watch where he's walking because he's... Okay, so let me ask you, does he have something in his hand that he's looking down at called Mm -hmm. a tablet or a game? So I really... (laughs) One day he tripped over the brick in the garden and he did a like a face plan almost. Yes. And he's like, oh, oh, you know, I'm like, Bryce, you got to watch where you're going, dude. Yeah. And he got it. He didn't make a big deal of it. He knew that he was supposed to be watching where he was going. I know. But here, I would like to just help him with this by... Before we leave the door, the front door, he needs to not have the electronic in his hand. Right. He needs to pause it, whatever game he right. might be doing. If we need to, we need to extract it from his hands, mm-hmm. get him in, and then he's going to learn that once he's in and he's in his seat and he's buckled up, then he can have that back. Mm-hmm. And I think that would just be an awesome yeah. habit to develop for him. Well, some of these trips... I'm telling him that he he can't even bring it because I'll try to convince him that it's a short trip and we're only going Sonny, to. When you said trip, I thought you meant like trip no, and fall. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I, know, I see what you're saying. When we're going a, a short someplace. distance, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll tell him, you know, we won't be gone long. We'll leave it here plugged in, charging, you know, and. When that happens, we engage in more conversations, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's positive all the way around. But he does not watch where he's going a lot, often. So I think that's something we got to really, maybe that's the one we'll kind of focus on out of this list. And then the last is social skills, accepting losing, which I'm going to say he's doing much better with that. Interrupting appropriately. Again, working on it. Mm -hmm. Personal space. I'm going to come back to that in a second. I'll come back to that in a second. Okay. And then taking turns, which I think he's good with that. Yeah, he's good with that. Um, okay, so the personal space. So well, I'm, with you. Well, and that's is, what is I that want to share. Talking about? Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so this is a tough one because as the parent, and especially as mommy, if I tell him, dude, you know, <laughs> he, I mean, well, when I say he's in my space, with, he is in my he space. Like, oh, well, he likes to give you kisses and hug you. But it's not even just that. He like gets like right up in my face. As fa- if he's trying to show me a game, he's right up nose to nose to yeah. show me. You know, and it's just because he loves me so much. And mm-hmm. I know that. And I know it's because he's so excited that I'm sitting there beside him. And I know that. He's got all the right reasons. But I, if I correct him on that, I don't want him to feel feel like i am squelching his love for me at and all and that's how he would feel i i've felt that before like you know <laughs> like for instance so i'm working in the office right and we're on a break or something so i'm working at the computer he comes and grabs your office chair and he comes over and he's like right on my office chair and he's playing his game and he's he jumping up and down he's you know and i'm trying to work the mouse and he's running into me yeah and you know he sits down in the chair and i i slid him across the room i'm like hey buddy just give me a minute <laughs> he's like why'd you slide me across the room <laughs> like, i said i just need a little bit of space here i can't type and i can't you know yeah. uh work the computer with you bumping into me you know he likes to be close to he does he does and so i kind of felt like you know i shouldn't have done that um (laughs) so next time i'll I'll, i know i've seen it before where he has shut down emotionally where if you're like dude i gotta finish this i need you to leave the room and then his little face just falls and he leaves and walks out the room and closes the door and then i'll be like oh yeah, i think i said that to him one time yeah i'm not like, saying it happens I know, all the time I you know what i mean it. but it's I mean, like once he i just goes, realized what i said i'm like oh i should I, sometimes you just say things and they come out the wrong way so or you, you, know. you know what i'm saying so yeah. then like in my situation it is often where he's just like up on me and then you know the kisses and and i love the kisses but it's 
I mean, it's like constant, like almost like a smother. So mm-hmm. then what I get, and I guess, is it okay for him to do it with me? Yes. I don't see him doing that with other no, people. Do you see him do no. it with anybody else no, now? No, he doesn't. Of course not. I mean, like no. he used to kiss his friend, Michael, but that has stopped. That's been like over a year oh, and a half. Yeah. And now he doesn't well, have. Well, we told him back it. then <laughs> yeah, about really personal did. space. We had to really drill it. And home. then he figured it out. And we encourage him to give hugs or high fives to the right people and mm-hmm. stuff. So I really feel like maybe it's only with me. And it's if only it's with only you. with me, then I'm going to soak it up. Okay. Suck it up and soak it up. There you go. Because okay. it only, it's a phase, you know, it's a season. So I'm sure he'll grow. I don't know. He might <laughs> be doing know. it when he's 30. So what? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right, is that I'll all get you back got? to you on that. Yeah. Okay. Go. All right. So my last one is uh, his, we've talked about his savings bank before. So he's got saving for an, a big item, spending for like a a two dollar game, and then he's got give. So give to God or whatever. Um, Actually, he gave to us today. He gave to us today, which for is working. really sweet. Yes. Yeah. He out of the money that we gave him he gave us each a he dollar get, i got a quarter or you got a quarter i got you a got a dollar because you worked harder i did um but in any case i was talking about that he need you know the one side of his bank was for saving for something big you know i said you just could be like your car or when you turn 16 or it could be something you know like a large item that you want to purchase and i said what is it that you want to save for and without hesitation, he said, I'm saving for a big truck with hydraulics. And <laughs> I'm reflecting on that. And a few weeks ago, we saw a large pickup truck and it had those hydraulics. We were at like, a red light. Like on the Mexican yeah. cars that they go up and down. Well, this truck was going up and down and he thought that was the best thing since sliced bread. And so... <laughs> That's what he wants to do. He wants he wants a big truck that goes up and down. So it was pretty funny. Yeah, I yeah. didn't know it made that kind of impression, but it did. Yeah. It did. Pretty so, funny. Anyway, that's it for me. Okay. Well, I I thought this was gonna be a quick podcast, but we I had a lot you, of stuff. Listen, we can go seven days and have a lot of things to share because <laughs> that's just it. That's the way it is. It's the way it is around here. Um so I wanted to share one more thing. Uh, sometimes autism is so unpredictable and it can shake us up. And when I was driving to work, I, there was, I was listening to a different type of podcast and there was somebody speaking that it just resonated with me and he was talking about anchors and he's talking about hope. And, uh, and then that made me do like a little Bible verse search. And cause I knew there was a, a verse about, you know, hope and having our anchor in Christ. And I found that and it's Hebrews 619. And I told you, wow, that really resonated because my birthday is June 19th, Mm -hmm. 619 Hebrews. And the verse says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. And an anchor is really only effective if it's rooted into the dirt. Mm -hmm. If you just throw the anchor out of the boat and it kind of just lands flat and it's not dug in, your boat's still going to rock and you could tip over. But when you get that anchor dug in, you know, to where it's firm, then when the storms come, that's when you survive those storms without feeling all the turmoil. And that's what I felt like God was telling me, like, just keep anchoring into me and mm-hmm. I'm going to get you through this storm, you know, because with autism there, it's very unpredictable. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we've been on this journey for five years and there have been times that the boat felt like it could tip. But the more I anchor, you know, into my faith and just trust God with the big picture it just gives me hope. And as I see Bryce progressing and doing so well, and he's just happy every he's happy, day. Yeah. I mean, that gives me hope that he has a bright future. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've had friends who have recently, their children have gotten diagnosed. And, you know, it's a dark cloud that comes over and it's hard to deal with all of that. But there is hope and it is it's so much about our perspective and how we view this and so i just wanted to share that because it really resonated with me and i'm hoping that someone will hear this that it's going to resonate with them and 
you know, just anchor in for that hope. So Yeah, that's really good. It's really good. All right. Do we want to bring in the bebop? Um, what do you want to talk to him about? I don't know. He just always likes to say hi and I I have had several people tell me they love to hear his voice. Okay. So let's see. Let's, right, let's bring him in and see what he says. <laughs> All right. What do you want to say, Bryce? What do you want to talk about? Something. Want to talk about what do you something? want to talk about? What did you? Hi, booby. No, don't start that <laughs> no, again. No, no. What did you do today? How did you help Daddy today? Jackhammer. No. A jackhammer. Did you have a jackhammer? Do you remember yeah. rocks? What did you do to earn five dollars today? Um, dig up. What did you dig up? Um, um, the the rocks. Mm-hmm. And then what else did you do out there to help earn that five dollars? I jumped. I helped Daddy jump out. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was good. That's good. That was good. And then what was your special treat? Bye, people. Are you all done? <laughs> no, 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 no. Tell Booby. Bryce. Tell him what your favorite book is right now. <laughs> what did you say, Bryce? What's your favorite book right now? Tell him your favorite book. Dandy Lion. Dandy. Dandy. It's, it's called Dandy. Lion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happens in that book? Remember his snip slipped. His snip slipped, and what happened to the flower? It it was hurt. Yeah. Yeah, they hurt the flower, and they had to make it all better for his little girl, right? Yeah. Why did she cry? Well, she was sad because her flower got hurt. And then what happened? And then there was one dandy... How many Zandy? How many was there? Do you remember? There was one Dandy. Two one Dandy, Charlotte. three oh three Charlotte, four Charlotte. And, and five Charlotte. Right. Yeah, that's right. All righty. He's a little spacey. That's okay. Okay. We're gonna wrap it up. We're gonna wrap Episode up. Episode sixty six. Tell him anything to do to do this week? Hmm? What's something special they can do to be happy this week? What do you think? Knocking down things! Knocking down things. That makes you happy? Yeah. All right. I don't know why he said that because he doesn't knock things down around here. I'm sorry. I will, I will do something special cool. Okay. Like what, what would be something special cool? I got slime. You got slime? Oh, he did get yeah. slime. Yeah, for Miss Jacqueline. Bryce, so maybe they can go get some slime. Whose birthday is it this week? Daddy's birthday. Yeah. Said, are we going to make him a special cake? <gasps> you know what? Why don't you sing happy birthday to Daddy? You ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Daddy. Happy birthday to you. Yay! 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 Thank that you, That was perfect. All right, everybody. We're going to wrap up with that. This will be Chris's birthday week. It'll Bye, be a fun Bobby. one. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.